I literally hate you and want you to burn in hell. And that's why I support your lifestyle. He knows that by making you feel good about living a degenerate life, that you're going straight to hell. Satan doesn't love you. Yo, Elliot. Yo, E, I've recently moved out of my parents' house and I'm living alone. I work for 12 hours a day and I still manage to go to the masseuse, masseuse, every day after I finish work. Even if I'm fasting, tired, and feeling it's very wrong. That usually doesn't end well if you know what I mean. I wasn't this way before, but having all this time and money makes me do it now. I need your advice on this, please. So I'm gonna kind of like take a guess at what you mean by misuse. And I think that word misuse almost sounds like misuse, right? Like not using it properly. I think you're going to get massages with happy endings. Is that correct? Is that what it is? You're basically going to a prostitute of sorts, right? Like you're going there to get your massage, but then she finishes off by finishing you off. And you, you tend to go do that every day and you have the time and the money and you're tired and you think it's a fun thing to go do and you want to know how you can stop now listen i can't make you stop i'm not interested in making you stop you have to want to stop right you say you need advice on this right but do you really need advice or is it something that you the benefit outweighs the risk and that you just you don't have a good enough reason to stop right Abdullah, right? That's your name. I'm going to assume you're Muslim, right? And that's a, that's a crazy assumption, right? But, but just based on that name, I'm going to assume that, right? Or some kind of religious guy. So is it worth it for you to get your nut rubbed off to go to hell, right? Like that's the kind of questions that we should be asking ourselves, right? There's no imminent threat to your life by paying money to have this lady go rub your nut, rub you off. But in the big picture... Is it adding to you or taking away? If, you, if, it, if it means that I get to blow my low but I go to hell, well, maybe that's okay to you, right? If it means I get to blow my low but I lose my vitality, I lose my strength, I lose my focus, I lose my testosterone, I lose my power as a man because I'm leaking all over the place, maybe that's okay for you. It really boils down to whether or not you need to stop. And I think what happens is a lot of times we don't stop until we hit the rock bottom. You got to hit rock bottom. Something needs to happen. Maybe like your, I don't know, your wife finds out or something embarrassing happens. Or you have a revelation one day and realize that you're living a sinful life and that you're going to go to hell. I think it's important for us to remember that if we die in a, in a, in a state of sin, mortal sin, that we're going to hell. I think it's a good idea. I think it's perfect justice that if God gives us a law and we don't follow that law, we're not being the perfect creation, right? Didn't he say some wood is made for the fire, right? Not all trees bear fruit. Some trees, their wood is made for the fire. And it's the same for people. In our egalitarian world where everybody's okay, everybody's going to heaven, God wouldn't, right, all that, like where we think God is, thinks like your mama. God don't think like your mama. God wants perfection. God wants perfection. This is why he's called a father. This is why he's called a pattern. Because what do you do? What do you do? What do you see when you look at the blueprint of something? You look at the perfect plan for it. The perfect plan for something is the pattern, is the paternity, is the father, God. God has a perfect plan for us. But when we live outside that perfect plan, we don't bear the fruit that that blueprint was expected to. And then we're made for the fire. Then we're just wood made for the fire. And I ain't saying this like a righteous man. I'm saying this as a sinner myself that has to check myself all the time. And if I find that I'm living, in, I'm living with consistent sin, I, gotta, I, have to ex I have to examine that. Because at any moment, I could be taken out of this world. At any moment, I could face judgment. This is another important thing that I think we have to remember, right? This is in, a, in the West. I think Muslims are a little different. I think you guys are, are still much more conservative. I hear from my Muslim friends that things are changing, though. 
but at least you guys are, 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 are still retaining and living your faith. In the West, we've, we've watered it down so much. Christianity is not what it was. It's just, it's fake. It's made up. It's new age. And one of the new age things about uh, modern Christianity is that nobody talks about judgment. They talk about grace, they talk about mercy, but nobody wants to talk about judgment. You know why? Because judgment hurts. It hurts your feelings, right? It's not compatible with feeling good to know that, hey, I'm getting, I'm going to a prostitute every day. It feels real good. Don't step on my, don't rain on my parade. Don't ruin my good time. Let me live licentiously, right? I put this meme up and I mentioned it in a video the other day with a picture of like, you know, uh, a, a rainbow puppy, right? Living a, living a life of, you know, decadence and a Satan puppy. And the, sa and the Satan puppy or the rainbow puppy is saying to the Satan puppy, thank you, Satan, for supporting my progressive lifestyle, All right? And which is basically means perversion, right? Thank you, Satan, for supporting my, my, my progressive lifestyle, my alternative lifestyle, right? Going to the prostitute every day, whatever it is. And then the Satan puppy says, it's, it's like all red and it's got like horns. It looks like the devil. <laughs> and it goes, I literally hate you and want you to burn in hell. And that's why I support your lifestyle. He knows that by making you feel good about living a degenerate life, that you're going straight to hell. Satan doesn't love you. He wants, you to, he wants to see you going to hell by going to prostitutes. He wants to see some of us to go to hell by drinking too much, by smoking too much, by cheating on our wives, by sinning in all different sorts, sinning in all different kinds of ways. I do too. I try to stay in a state of mortal grace and I'll be lucky if I, if, if I get to go to purgatory, right? And purge out some of my beta ways because I still got them. I'm not a perfect man. But I'm not so arrogant to think that, oh, well, God would never judge me no, God is the perfect judge. He's the perfect judge. That's why he's the pattern. He has the standard and he expects us to be saints. Are you a saint? Probably not. Am I a saint? No. But you got to strive every day and it's worth it. It's worth striving every day to be perfect. My dad used to say when I was a kid that he doesn't expect perfection from me. And that was good. That was okay. You guess what? I was a C student. But now that I grew up, and now that, you know, my father is still my father, but the, father, but the heavenly father is my true pattern. That father says, Elliot, I want you to be perfect. And that's not an easy task. That's not an easy pill to swallow. And it definitely ain't fun to think that when I die, I'm going to meet my judge. Jesus is judge. He's not just our savior, right? Don't forget that. I forget that too. Once again. But we got to bring it, we got we to gotta remind ourselves of that when we're doing bad things. Because when we're doing those bad things, they feel good in the moment. And the world will support it. And you won't get caught. And it's going to be okay. But all you need is one day for you to get back in your car after that lady rubbed you off. Get into a car accident. And Allah, right? Because if you're Muslim, you all say Allah. Allah looking straight at you like, what happened, Abdullah? You've been getting your, 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 your little pee-pee rubbed off every day by this Chinese lady. That's not what I wanted you to do with your vitality. God wants us to use our vitality, use our sexuality to make babies and to have families and to lead our wives and to do great things in our lives. That's what our, that's what our, our essence is for. But we out there spilling it, wasting it, right? Uh, uh, pro, turn it into something that's sacred into something profane. And so that's just my little rant on that, bro. I know you wanted me to give you some like ideas about what to do so you can stop going there, but you have to want to stop going there and you have to, you have to want badly enough to be a saint, to be perfect and to live the way God wants us to live. It's not an easy thing, especially in the degenerate world. I understand. And I want anybody ever to think that, yo, listen to Elliot preaching. He thinks that, he, that he's perfect. I am not. I am not. But I want to inspire you to be on the same journey with me, which is to try. Try every day. Try. Try. You can do better. You can do better. I can do better. Let's do better. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip 
from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.